Today on the show, we're launching a special three-part series featuring the nonprofit organization City Year, where you'll hear more about the incredible work being done to help keep students in school and on track to succeed. In this episode, we sit down with Abby Gruy. Abby is an AmeriCorps team lead for City Year Seattle and shares with us how her journey with City Year is driving significant and long-term impact not only for her students, but also for her future. If you or someone you know is interested in becoming a City Year Corps member, be sure to check out the show notes on how you can contact your local City Year office today. This is The Career Q, the podcast focused on helping you navigate the signals in your career to keep you growing and moving forward in business and in life. Here's today's host, Stacey Harris. It's great to see you again, Abby. Thanks so much for joining us today. Of course, yeah. thank you. So we actually got to meet you previously at a school tour for Highland Park Elementary School in Seattle, Washington. And uh, it was such an incredible experience. Thank you so much for having us that day and, and showing us the great um, hands-on work that AmeriCorps um, members are doing every single day. It's incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, so I actually want to talk to you about um, how you were introduced to City Year. So take us back. You're, you're actually completing your second year, correct? correct? So what did it look like when you first heard about City Year? So I heard about City Year through a couple different avenues. When I was a senior in college, I knew that I wanted to do a service year. My older sister had done a service year after she graduated college and said it was one of the best experiences she had had and that she grew professionally a lot and it really helped her decide what she wanted to pursue. So I knew I wanted to do a service year and then it was a question of what service year. There are so many different AmeriCorps programs or other service organizations. So I wanted to narrow it down kind of based on what type of work I would be doing. So while I was in college, I did a lot of peer tutoring and mentoring, and I've worked with kids forever. I worked at a summer camp for a really long time. So I always knew I liked working with students and knew I liked kind of tutoring and mentoring, but also had never thought about being a teacher. It was not really something I was that interested in or excited about, but had these experiences that aligned maybe with teaching. So it was actually a professor at my school that I was working with, and she was, she was a professor at our graduate school of education who was working with an undergraduate professor in the biology department. And we were all kind of working together on how to effectively tutor freshman year students in like biology courses to keep them in that major. And it was those two professors who told me that they were like, you should think about education and teaching. And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe I should do that in my service year to explore it so that I didn't dive into a master's of education without any experience, without knowing if it was something I was really excited about. So I talked to the professor at the Graduate School of Education and she recommended City Year as an organization. And then I was looking into it more and realized that an old high school friend who was older than me was currently doing City Year when I was looking at it. So we met up when I was home over winter break that year and she told me how great of an experience she was having in Boston doing City Year. So I was like, well, if an old friend loves it, if a college professor is recommending it, and I did my own research and it seemed like it was really reputable and there was a lot of like really great experiences and it seemed structured and organized. Um, so I decided to apply and that's how I wound up at City Year. That, and the rest is history. Yes. That's great. <laughs> so um, that was before you graduated. Correct. That it you was, applied. It was during my senior year of college that I applied the fall of my senior year of okay. college. And uh, were you already in the Seattle area at that time? I was living in Portland, Oregon. Okay. So in the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. but it also involved a move to it did. Seattle. Okay. So you're talking about moving on from your academic career and moving to a, a new town. Maybe not a new region, but a new town, um, and you're embarking on this new adventure. So it's incredibly brave of you to have done that. Um, I I don't know that I would have done that. I would like to maybe think that I would, but I'm not sure. So you go through the uh, the evaluation process, talking with your high school friends, your professors. So that was a part of your evaluation. But what was it about the city and mission that was really meaningful to you? I think something that was really meaningful was all of the leadership opportunities that I saw City Year presenting and how 
organized of an organization it is and how sustainable it felt to me. The fact that students were continuing to receive city year services, so I wasn't stepping into a place that would have no idea what I was doing and things like that. And it felt like an organization that really valued the continuation of their services and really building a strong foundation and joining a part of a community that was all working for the same mission. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's a national organization, it felt very organized and, and yeah, that there's a huge community that all shares the same values and shares the same mission and really believes in professional development and believes in students. And everyone I talked to was so passionate about the work that they were doing. People I talked to who were currently doing city year or staff, everyone is just so passionate and so inspired and so idealistic that it was hard to imagine that it wouldn't be a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and how can you say no to something like that? Mm -hmm. Right. So what were some of the goals when you first joined city year and have those goals been met? Yes. It's interesting to think about goals when I first joined city year. I'm not sure that I had looking back and thinking about when I first joined city year, I'm not sure I would have been able to really articulate necessarily what goals were. I think coming in, I was wanted to have a service year and I wanted to learn about the education system and have an experience in a classroom and become a better tutor and mentor. And those goals have definitely been met. And I've had so many other goals that have been met after that also. And I think that that's a really cool way that I've developed as an individual through this organization is recognizing ways that I can grow and becoming a lot more self-aware and reflective and being able to set those goals for myself and understand that even if I'm working in a classroom, there are a lot of other things I can accomplish for students or for myself that aren't just improving their math score. There's a lot of things that I can achieve and those students can achieve that I've been able to reflect on and articulate so much more now after spending time in that organization than when I first joined. Mm. I'm not sure I had any idea the things that I'd be able to accomplish or how I would grow as an individual and as a professional when I first came. So it's really interesting looking back on how I perceived what my experience would be when I first joined City Year. And I definitely accomplished the goals that I had, but those goals were not... <laughs> Not everything. I've yeah. done so much more. So it far <laughs> exceeded your expectations. Yes. That's that's yeah. great. So what does it mean to be an AmeriCorps member for City Year? What does a typical day look like? Mm -hmm. So a typical day for a core member. So thinking about my school and the core members at my school, we get to school at 7 o'clock in the morning. So before any students arrive, usually before most of the teachers arrive, and we circle up and we start our day off with some inspiration for each other and we share joys to start our day off on a really high note and it's an opportunity to share any announcements or debrief of what might be happening that day and then core members all have some morning duties so they they're some of the first people that students see when they get to school every day we have core members who stand outside the front doors and greet students as they come in there's core members hanging out in the cafeteria while students have breakfast and core members out on the playground, hanging out with kids while they're waiting for the bell to ring. So we start off there um, greeting students as they get to school and like really starting the day off intentionally. And then when school starts, core members are in the classroom and working with kids all day long. So every core member serves in a third through ninth grade class. We're in third through ninth grade classrooms throughout the country. And at my school, we're just in third, fourth and fifth grade since it's elementary. So every core member has a classroom and they're paired with a teacher and they're in that classroom all day unless they're working with students outside of the classroom. So it's really great because even if there are only tutoring certain students in one academic area, they can understand what's happening in their whole day and everything that's going on in their school day and in their learning process so they can pull from other areas and be really intentional and really aligned with what teachers are doing in their lessons so that students are hearing the same thing from their teacher and from their core member. So they're in the classroom all day from eight to two and then students leave except for our students who stay for our after school program. So we then run an after school program which is about an hour and a half which at our school we're a sole provider for which is really 
really awesome. We're able to design our own program and our own curriculums, and we collaborate with the administration and teachers about what students are doing in the classrooms, and core members do another hour of academic support for students, and then they get to host some fun clubs for kids to go to. So there's cooking club or art club and fun extra things for students to do at the end of the day. And then students leave a little bit before four and core members get a little bit of work time to prep for the next day when they tutor and do after school <laughs> and all of those things again in all of their behavior, lesson plans. And then uh, we leave at five. We do another circle to end our day and share a joy from what happened during our day and kind of end our day together as a team and as a community. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And and so you're fostering uh, the relationship not only with the students, but with other core members, Definitely. right? Um, mm -hmm. And so you're spending a lot of time together mm -hmm. uh, and you're building those relationships and that's mm -hmm. great. And to bookend the day with, uh, the, you know, even the small celebration of, of something that is joyful. I mean, gosh, we could all probably stand to use that in our daily lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it can get kind of crazy. And uh, if you don't stop and enjoy those moments, um, they can pass you by. So, Abby, core members are in the schools day in, day out, and providing um, the students with that consistent relationship and, and making sure that they're understanding um, the students' needs through the ABCs, right? Mm -hmm. Attendance, behavior, and uh, coursework. But from a, a core member perspective, um, you had mentioned earlier professional development and training. How does that look uh, throughout the course of, of the year of, of serving? We start off, core members come to sit here and they join in the beginning of August and school in Seattle at least doesn't start until September. So our first development in professional development and training is pretty much the month of August. And then once we're in schools, we meet about every other Friday as a whole core to do more trainings. And we try to be responsive to what core members are looking for or maybe what they're struggling with in service. So if they want more resources around how to tutor in ELA or in math, or maybe they really need more resources on how to work with students who are having behavior challenges and really giving core members the resources they need to feel like they're effective in their job. And then we also, especially the second half of the year, do a lot of work in what we call LACI, which stands for Leadership After City Year, and that is all about what you're going to do and how you're taking your experience this year and applying it to your career. Because City Year is typically a one-year experience and it's built to have a lot of turnover because it's a service year and we have so many AmeriCorps members. But we really want to be intentional when we think about how are you, what are you learning this year and what skills are you gaining that you can apply to your career and your future. And so we have workshops on resume or cover letter writing or the art of the interview and all sorts of stuff like that so that core members can feel prepared to enter whatever career they want to in the future and have support in that. And then thinking about all the trainings that we've received. So I've received as a team leader too a lot of trainings on coaching and having crucial conversations and thinking about all of those opportunities that have been given through City Year and those trainings and how I can apply them to what I want to do in the future and how those have helped me grow as a professional. Mm. And what an incredible opportunity, mm -hmm. right, to be able to have a, a condensed format of, of that development in addition to the impact that you're having on the students' lives. So mm -hmm. it's almost in parallel that you're helping the, the students grow, but you're ultimately uh, helping your own professional development and journey as well. That's, that's great. So let's talk about some of the relationships that you've de developed with the AmeriCorps members. How crucial is that to having a successful year of serving? It is very crucial. You work very, very closely with your fellow AmeriCorps members, especially on your team. And I'd say each school team has a very unique team identity that often is formed, which I think is a really unique aspect of our service also. And the teams are also very diverse, which is intentional. So people with different education backgrounds, different ages, different experiences, different, you know, we have a diversity in regards to race and ethnicity also. And 
that's a really great way for core members to learn from each other so that you don't have a homogenous group of people coming and serving and not being challenged by each other and not learning from each other. So I think that it's really crucial to have trusting and respectful relationships with each other and really forming friendships on top of just being coworkers because you're sharing a very challenging experience and they're the people who understand what you're going through because they're sharing it with you. And so when you need support from someone, you can look to your team member mm -hmm. um, or you can look to other AmeriCorps members too because they, they understand it more than someone who isn't serving in the schools. So having those relationships and then having that trust with each other so that if your teammate does challenge maybe a view you have or a way that you're doing something in service, you've built that relationship with that person and can trust them and have conversations and really like work through together how to grow and yeah, mm, develop. That's right. What I'm getting the sense of is that within City Air, there are these communities that feed into the bigger community that feed into the bigger community. So it's the team members that you have a specific school that, you know, bubbles into the cohort of core members that are coming into the, the larger Seattle area that leads into the national presence. So um, it sounds like an incredible opportunity to foster relationships that will likely stay with you for, an you know, maybe for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. that's that's great. And also provides you with the skill set that you <laughs> need to be able to go out and tackle the world. Yes. So, okay, so let's talk about... Let's actually talk about some of your favorite memories with students, other core members. What are some of the, the big highlights that you've experienced? I think that there's lots of highlights with in my first year when I was working in the classroom and relationships that I developed with students and really watching them succeed and accomplish their goals, whether it was academic goals or behavior goals or just watching them grow. I was in a third grade classroom and that's such a transformational year for kids when you're going from like eight to nine years old, you enter as still like a little kid and they're still kids when they're done with third grade, but I feel like it's a really big year in regards to development. So forming those relationships with students and watching them just like blossom into their own person was really really great to see and I think of like one student in particular that I had a lot of really awesome memories with last year and he I worked with him on math and in behavior and I remember the day when he went from he had gotten like a 50% on a math test or a couple math tests in the beginning of the year he was really not doing well and in our class um, to pass it was an 80% and I remember the day when he got a 79% on his math test, but he was so happy. Oh. And that's what's great is because he like came up to me and showed me right away. And he was like, I'm so close to passing, which instead of saying like, I still didn't pass. So it showed both his academic growth and also like his mindset. The yeah. fact that he went from being like, I don't like math. I don't do good at math to saying, I'm so close to passing. I can do this. So that is like, I still get yeah, so warm yeah, and yeah. when I think of him then and the same student too with some behavior things, watching him get so frustrated at recess sometimes and like needing to come and solve a problem to me being actually able to watch him from across the playground have a problem and fix it on his own oh. and like grow in that way too. So that or just also the continuation of relationships. I had a student who I would set a lot of goals with last year. And she came up to me the first week this year. I hadn't seen her for three months. And she goes, Miss Abby, are we setting goals together again this year? When are we going to start that again? And so just like how excited they are to like work with you and watching them really gain that excitement and remember it and have that eagerness and determination to succeed and want to set goals yeah. for themselves. That's amazing. Well, and for them so. to seek it out, mm -hmm. right? And that perhaps two years ago, mm -hmm. um, she may not have felt, especially age-wise, I mean, just having the confidence to be able to walk up to an adult and say, hey, are we going to do this again mm -hmm. or what? Because that really mm -hmm. worked out well for me. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And that's one of those immeasurable rewarding experiences exactly. right where you can't really define it put a number to that mm -hmm. um, but that may be an experience that she takes with her for the rest of her life mm -hmm. and she will likely walk up to a high school you know teacher or 
a college professor and be like, all right, we're going to sit down and do goals today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hopefully that's, that's the right. hope, right? Yes. That you build yes. those habits. Yeah. I hope she And does. that ultimately she may actually pass that for, pass that on to another student uh, mm-hmm. later down the road for her. Mm-hmm. That's great. So let's talk about your, the skills and experience that you've acquired during your time at City Year and kind of how your journey has evolved. As we'd mentioned earlier, you're actually in your second year of service. So let's talk about those um, skills and experience, but also how that journey has evolved for you? So I think like I mentioned before, when I first joined City Year, I I was not expecting to stay two years. I didn't realize how much I would grow. And so I think one way that I really see how I've transformed from when I first entered City Year to now in general is my confidence. Mm -hmm. I came in very unsure, very hesitant and more reserved and have gained so much confidence in the skills that I do have and the ability to work on skills that I may not have yet and to seek out help for that and mentorship for that. So that's something that definitely has evolved for me is my confidence and ability to recognize what skills I have and what skills I need to work on and my ability to reflect uh, on my experiences and take aspects of different experiences and how I can learn from them or maybe let an experience go or reflect on what I did well and how I can do that again and really being intentional about thinking about how I'm doing and more self-aware in that respect. Also, I think really understanding how my experience with City Year can translate into other careers and professions and my professional development. I, when I first entered, kind of thought if I'm not going to be a teacher, that that's okay. It'll still just be a cool service year and that'll be great. Whereas now I think I still don't really think I'll be a teacher, but I chose to say second year because this organization offers so much leadership development and so many opportunities for me to grow and explore and form connections with people that a lot of other opportunities, I don't know that I would be able to develop in this way. So I also think, yeah, understanding that this service year is more than just working in a classroom with students and that I can gain a lot of, there's a lot of self self growth that also happens and that you need to sometimes seek it out, but that this organization also gives you a lot of framework for that. Mm, that's great. So, and I would imagine your civil serving the community will stay with you beyond city year as well, or continue on with city year. Um, even if you, um, is there a third year available or? Typically not. So with the mayor Corps, you receive mm. a education award at the end of your service year but you can only receive two of those. Uh. Some people, like there, I did meet someone this summer who serves at a different site who was in their third year of service, uh. but they don't get like an education award. Sure. So it's pretty unlikely to do a third year with AmeriCorps, but a lot of our staff, so Sean mm-hmm. was a core member and a team leader yeah. and then stayed on as staff. So yeah. my Ren, who you met, he yeah. did the same thing. He was a core member, a team leader, and, and then pay back as staff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So what do next steps look like in the journey of Abby? <laughs> Who knows? It's mystery. <laughs> um, so I've always been really passionate about healthcare for a long time. I grew up around it and it's always been something that has excited me. So like you were saying, stay kind of in service. I'm hoping in the next year I can work in more of a healthcare nonprofit and really ex- start exploring the healthcare world. I've always thought that I wanted to be a practitioner, so maybe a nurse or a doctor or a nurse practitioner, and that's still definitely a possibility. However, this y- working with City Year has also really inspired me to stay in more like public service and working with communities as a whole mm-hmm. and making greater changes. Um, I've become much more excited about health equity and health access Hmm. since entering more of a service community. So I'm hoping to work in healthcare nonprofits to explore more of that public health area and decide if I want to pursue a master's in public health or still do nursing because I love the idea of making greater change and I'm not sure. I think I could definitely do that as a nurse or a doctor. I think I would love that. And I also wonder if I could make more change in like a public health area. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to kind of get my foot in the door and explore public health a little bit before committing to going on to grad school in one or the other. And honestly, City Year is a huge reason why I'm thinking more public health Mm. too, because I've been exposed to a lot of 
inequities and not just in education, but with the community, you see a lot of other things too. So health equity, health access, food access, yes. all of that, that I see in my communities and I see in the students. And those are things that I'm still really passionate and want to continue serving in a similar community and just focusing on a different area. Yeah. But, and because you know, health is, is an integral part of a student's success, right? If they're, if they're not healthy or if they're not getting access to healthy food, um, how can they be expected to perform at their very best if, if they're concerned about where their next meal is coming from or if they don't have ready access to it um, or if they're not being educated to make healthier choices to fuel their bodies so they can actually go out and do great things. So I love that. And Abby, I am... I not in a very stockish way, but I am going to be following your career. <laughs> and I'm excited to see where you take this. This is incredible. And and for you to, to have gained and opened yourself up to such an incredible opportunity in such a short period of time too, because in your career, it's in its infancy, right? And um, you're trying to figure it out. And, and trust me, folks like me in mid-career, we're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> but for you to be open to an opportunity like this, that you are simultaneously giving back to the community, growing professionally, growing personally. So I commend you for the work that you're doing today and the work that you're going to be doing in the future. And again, it may appear that I'll be stalking you, but it's just <laughs> of all, the best intentions, the best intentions. So as we wrap up today, I want to um, actually ask you for the folks that are listening out there, whether it be a college student trying to figure out what they're going to do after they graduate, or if there's a parent of a college student out there that's like, oh, what is my kid going to be doing after they graduate? What is the one thing that you'd actually like folks to take away um, about City Year? Mm -hmm. I think one thing to take away about City Year and about being a core member and really serving with City Year is that it is very hard. It's very challenging. It's long hours and you're doing a lot and it's emotional and you become invested in these kids. So it's hard. And it's also the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Mm. So it is so worth the hours and the stress and everything that comes along with it because you see growth in these young people and you watch them develop and you watch them become individuals who then will give back to society and it's so rewarding and it's also city or core members and city or we're not going in to save kids i think that's something i also want people to know is we kids don't need saving they are beautiful, brilliant individuals that have so much potential and we're just there to be another caring adult in their lives to help them realize and understand their potential and believe in their own potential. Mm. And I think that's another thing to remember. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But kids are resilient, right? Mm -hmm. And, but giving, having more cheerleaders uh, on the sidelines, just cheering them on uh, will do, uh, have a greater impact in their lives than someone cr trying to come in and say, her, I'm here to save you. Uh, do it my way. And it's like, no, each individual child has something to, to provide and to, to go after. Um, and you guys are, you guys are just really kind of providing the guiding lights in order for them to be able to follow that path for whatever it's going to be for them. So thank you for this, Abby. This is incredible. Uh, if you're in college and you're out there, Look up City Year. I find that we'll provide tons of information about City Year um, in the show notes at thecareerq.com. You'll learn a little bit more about Abby. And I think it really just starts with the conversation, right? If you see a red jacket. So that's one of the identifying characteristics of being a, a core member, right? Is mm -hmm. if you see a red jacket or a red vest, uh, go up and start the conversation with a core member and ask them how their day was. What was their joy that they had today? So thank you again, Evie. This has been fantastic. Um, as I said earlier, just check out the show notes on thecareerq.com. Learn more about City Year and get out into your community and do what you can to make better happen. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to head on over to thecareerq.com where you can get more information, show notes, and related articles to today's topic. Also, if you like what you're hearing, head on over to iTunes subscribe to the podcast and make sure you leave us a rating and a review. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks again.
The Career Cue podcast is produced by Lens Group Media in the lovely Seattle, Washington.